I recently bought this Zebronix ATX power supply or a simple computer SMPS. I can see that a Zebronix company makes really good products. I have been using a couple of keyboards, mouse, power banks and uh, other computer parts from made by this company. One of the disadvantages of this power supply is it doesn't come with an AC power cable. So I had to get a separate cable for this. It doesn't cost much, around 60 to 80 rupees uh, you can get it. And the SMPS came for 450 which included the delivery charges. And you can see the rating of this power supply here. It's 3.3 volts at 24 amps, 5 volts at 38 amps, 12 volts at 15 amps and minus 12 volts at uh, 2 amps. And as you can see uh, the body is built of very good quality and the wires when you see the so there's this 24 pin connector, SATA connectors and others. And at the back side as you can see there's a cooling fan, a uh, DC fan which uh, cools the system down when it's running. So let's power this up and test it. I have turned on the power supply but as you can see it's not yet switched on as the fan is not turning. Now to switch on the power supply what we'll do is first we'll find for the green wire. Usually this will be in the 24 pin connector. This green wire should be connected to the black wire which is the ground. So when this wire is grounded the power supply switches on. Let's see. As you can see the power supply turns on as soon as you connect the wire and you can see that the fan is turning. Another indication of power supply turning on is this grey wire which is a power on indicator. You can simply connect an LED with a series resistor of around 330 ohms to this so that it will turn on when the power supply is on. Now as it is turned on, let's test the voltage at each wire. The black wire is the ground wire. Let's test the voltage of yellow wire. It should give me around 12 volts. Red is 5 volts. Orange wire is 3.3 volts. To test the loading capability, first I'll connect a 10 watt LED to the 12 volt line, that is the yellow wires. And due to high current, it gets very hot in couple of seconds. Let's test the current going to this LED. Ideally, the LED should take only 0.9 amps, but it's taking close to 1.4 amps to 1.9 amps. Let's connect this 5 ohm 10 watt resistor and check the current. This takes close to 3.5 amps. Now let's open this SMPS and see what's inside. From the AC input wire, this green wire which is the earth wire is connected directly to the body of the SMPS. This allows protection from shocks when touching the body of the SMPS. The other two wires that is the phase and neutral wire go to this side of the board. Here as you can see there is a small fuse which protects the circuit from high voltage. After the fuse, there is a bridge rectifier here consisting of 4 diodes along with a thermistor and this big beefy capacitors. It's difficult to understand the circuit like this. Let's try to plot a block diagram to understand the circuit.
So for the SMPS, the first stage is the 220 volts AC input, which passes through this fuse. This fuse is for protection from high voltages from damaging the circuit. And this is fed to the rectifier. There is also a thermistor here which helps to change the current flowing into the SMPS depending on the heat generated by the device. The output of bridge rectifier is filtered DC. This output is again given to MOSFET to convert it into AC. So what happens is the input to the bridge rectifier is AC signal like this. And this is given to bridge rectifier to convert it into pure DC. This pure DC is again given to MOSFET switching circuit which converts it into square wave AC. The width of this signal is controlled using this isolator. So the output of switching circuit is given to the input of transformer. So why convert AC to DC and back to AC? Uh, the input of the bridge rectifier that is the AC signal is of frequency 50 Hz. But the output of the switching circuit that is the MOSFET switching circuit is close to few kilohertz. By changing this frequency here we will be changing the width of the signal and by changing the width of the signal we will be changing the voltage created at the output. So for this reason we are converting AC to DC and back again to AC. So the output of this high frequency switching circuit is then fed to a transformer. This transformer acts as an isolator isolating the input means the signal from the output DC signal so that it will protect the devices connected at the output and also avoid shock. So the output of this transformer is 12 volts, 5 volts and 3 volts and these voltages are then converted into DC using the rectifier and filter. So after converting into DC, then what is the need of this circuit here? This feedback circuit helps to maintain the output voltage constant. See for example, I designed the circuit to give around 6 volts, but the output which I got is 7.2 volts due to few uh, errors. Then to remove this extra 1.2 volts, what I'll do is I'll connect this uh, feedback circuit. So what happens here is, a part of the output voltage is fed to this comparator block. This comparator block already has a threshold voltage and this compares this threshold voltage to the feedback signal and depending on the difference it, the, it feeds the PWM generator. The PWM generator is a simple square wave generator which is used to control the switching circuit. There is this isolator block here between the switching circuit and the PWM generator which is used to isolate the main signal from the output signal. Again, this is a simple transformer. Depending on the deviation of the output voltage, the frequency of the PWM signal here changes, hence changing the switching frequency of this MOSFET switching circuit. And this frequency in turn changes the output voltage, hence maintaining it stable. We also saw a toroid close to the output on the circuit which is nothing but a series inductive filter used to remove the ripples. And the PWM generator and the comparator collectively are used in a single IC. So that is the block diagram of the circuit of SMPS. Few of the SMPS circuits shut down after some time if no load is connected. For those to solve the problem you can simply connect a dummy load like this one to one of the pins of the SMPS. Mostly it should be the one which supplies higher current. So this dummy load should be anywhere around 5 ohms and the power rating of the resistor should be around 10 watts or more to protect it from burning out. So that's all for today. If you like this video, you might like some of my other videos too. Please check them out at Electronics Made Easy YouTube channel. Till then, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.